Is it possible that you could be making your acne worse like I have been recently? Guess how I did it? By taking the wrong damn supplements. Going backwards has made me so upset and just... <sighs> but I guess that it's all a learning curve. So in this video, I'm going to share with you what I was doing wrong despite all of my knowledge. Also give you a skin update and give you some tips on how you can change things around and overcome your acne in the fastest way possible. I can help you out. I can help you out. I can help you out. Welcome, my name is Madison Don't and I created this channel to help you get smart about your body and your health. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the fact that at the end of December 2019, I realized that I had been taking the wrong supplements for my hormones and therefore my acne, causing my breakouts to be pretty much as worse as they were when I first got acne at the start of 2019. So I had the cysts on my cheeks coming back, I even had the cysts down my neck coming back. Just everything was coming back. Now, Dim and Vitex are the perfect supplements for some people, but likely not for me. So in this video, I'm also going to share with you how to determine whether you should be taking those supplements. To be more specific, I have been putting off getting a hormone test since coming off the pill because they are over 200 Australian dollars. So as soon as I came off the pill, I started taking Fembalance as just a generic hormone balancing supplement. And it did serve me well as I talk about in this video here, but it was never going to be my long-term solution because it wasn't targeted to what my body needed. And I wasn't going to know what that was until I got a hormone test. But instead of getting that hormone test, I tried to save a little bit of money by researching the experience of others and just looking at generally what the pill does to female hormones and I found that typically when people come off the pill um, they have high estrogen and low progesterone and it's this imbalance in the estrogen and progesterone that actually causes the post pill acne. I did however go and get a blood test with my local doctor so my GP um, but I knew that it wasn't going to be as accurate as the hormonal saliva tests that are like over $200 um, but I just got a blood test to test all of my other vitamins and minerals and you know just a general test to make sure that everything was okay. It did come back and say that my DHEAS was high um, and my research and also my doctor told me that that could commonly mean either high testosterone or high estrogen so it's the precursor for both of them. And if you've seen my what hormone causes acne video you would know that testosterone is a huge cause of acne um, or at least can be and so when I got those results back and it did say that my DHEAS levels were high I concluded that it was because of high estrogen high testosterone um, so because of that I also did my natural treatments that I also talk about in that video to try and lower my testosterone levels so like the licorice tea and everything else that I talk about in that one um, but I was also experiencing other symptoms that made me think it was high testosterone too such as an increase in thickness and um, growth rate of body hair and also my face was getting a lot more oily too so that's kind of what made me think that it was estrogen I mean testosterone as well. But once I researched that most women have high estrogen after coming off the pill, I thought, well, it can be the precursor to either testosterone or estrogen. So perhaps I am like most women and I do have high estrogen after coming off the pill and perhaps those DHEA levels, DHEAS levels were both high estrogen and high testosterone. I didn't automatically just jump and think that it was only high estrogen because I was still experiencing those testosterone um, symptoms so I just kind of thought okay well maybe I have both high testosterone and high estrogen. I'd also been researching common hormone supplements that I'd heard of such as DIM and Vitex and looking into what they were and whether I should be on them um, and I was also watching a lot of other people on YouTube um, and their acne stories such as Sarah's Day, um, the Mesha twins, I don't know if I said that right, um, and a lot of other people as well and it all seemed like their naturopaths were putting them on Vitex. 
So we'll go through DIM first and then we're going to go into Vitex. So firstly, Lara Bryden, she is a naturopathic doctor and the author of the Period Repair Manual. So according to her and many others, DIM is a phytonutrient that is derived from plants such as broccoli, Brussels sprouts, um, cabbage and kale. Um, and so what it does is it blocks androgen receptors, so therefore lowering testosterone, but in the meantime it also can decrease estrogen. Lara also said that she has found it to be quite helpful in the treatment of hormonal acne, so I thought Perfect, here is a supplement that will lower my testosterone levels and in the process also lower my estrogen levels, which according to the research I should have because I just came off the pill. Um, so it really was a win-win and I really thought that I should be taking DIM. That rhymed. So I then looked into Vitex, also known as Chased Berry, and it is a naturopathic herb that is also said to clear hormonal acne by restoring the balance of estrogen and progesterone. So what happens is it's supposed to lower estrogen and increase progesterone so that they are more balanced after coming off the pill. So when I went to my local pharmacy that sells all of these practitioner brand supplements through an in-house naturopath, I spoke to him and he said that I have just come off the pill so I should be on both DIM and Vitex. So I was only going to get one, um, I didn't really think about taking them both at the same time but he said that they do different things and so you would be better off just taking both of them at the same time. Now this isn't very scientist of me because say that it works, I wouldn't really know whether it was the DIM or whether it was the Vitex. but. As you guys will probably know, when your skin is just going completely crazy, you kind of just want to take everything that's potentially going to help and then clear it up as fast as possible. You don't want to like try this and see if it works and then try this for another two months and see if it works. You just want to like try it all and something in there will work. Um, so yeah, in that respect, I don't really know whether it is the DIM or the Vitex that didn't work for me. I do, I have heard of people breaking out on Vitex and it actually being worse for their acne. Um, but yeah, I'll get to what I'm doing about that later. So I started taking those supplements and a couple weeks later I experienced what I called acne 2.0. So it was really disheartening and I talk about it in this video here um, and there were also some other symptoms that I experienced such as bleeding black blood in the middle of my cycle um, and a few other things as well but I kind of concluded from that that it was doing what well they were doing what they were supposed to be doing so they were detoxing um, and any excess hormones that I had in my body they were getting rid of and flushing out so I kept taking the supplements and two weeks later after the bleeding I had clear skin and it all cleared up and I was feeling great so I thought that the hormonal supplements were just doing what they supposed what they were supposed to be doing and I'm gonna have clear skin from here on in I did keep taking them after that as well because I was told that I should be taking them for about three months um, and also because my skin had cleared and I didn't really have any actives but it wasn't perfect like I was still getting tiny breakouts so I figured that I hadn't really finished the course so I just kept taking them but towards the end of December so just in time for Christmas my skin was shocking again um, and yeah. I just I was so lost because I thought that they were working so it was actually after talking to a friend who is also a senior biology teacher shout out to Jess if she's watching um, and I kind of just clicked that maybe I didn't have high estrogen maybe I had low estrogen um, and the question that kind of sparked that train of thought was isn't estrogen supposed to be good for the skin because you know when you're trying to go on the pill to better your skin you go on the high estrogen pill and then your skin gets better um, and that kind of stopped me in my tracks because I had read that high estrogen causes acne and it is that imbalance in estrogen and progesterone that can cause acne post pill um, but I just never really kind of looked further into the specific symptoms of high estrogen versus low estrogen and so even though you can get acne both with high and low estrogen now that I was actually 
experiencing some different symptoms, I had a little bit more to go off. So I was losing weight really, really, really easily. And I know from personal experience that when you go on the high estrogen pill, you gain so much weight. So like your skin clears, which is great, but you gain so much weight. Um, and that's just estrogen does that. Um, and I was also getting, my face was getting so oily and I had attributed that because I thought that my testosterone levels were high, but upon doing further research, I found that the more estrogen you have, the less oily your, your face should be. Um, so that's kind of what led me to think, I thought high estrogen was what was causing my acne, but you can also get acne when you have low estrogen. So maybe I don't have high estrogen at all. Maybe I actually have low estrogen because I'm not putting on any weight. In fact, I'm doing the opposite. Like I was so thin, but not like an unhealthy thin, but I was just so thin and I wasn't, hadn't changed anything. I wasn't like doing restrictive diets or like killing myself at the gym. I just hadn't changed anything. Um, and then also the oil on my face was like getting ridiculous. So I thought, cool, maybe I've been doing this all wrong and I actually have low estrogen levels and now I'm taking all these supplements and it's lowering them even more. And this actually makes a lot of sense now as to why women get breakouts right before their periods, like the week before, because your estrogen levels drop and so that causes your sebum production to increase so your face gets more oily and therefore it's clogging those P acne bacteria in your pores and causing those breakouts. So yeah, but what I think is very important and what I definitely learnt from this experience was that all of those acne stories I watched, all of those women, what they actually had in common was that they had all been to a naturopath, they had all had their hormones accurately tested and so they were taking specific supplements that they were prescribed to target what their body needed. So the key similarity wasn't the supplements, it wasn't the Vitex, but that all of these women in these acne stories that I was watching, they all got a professional's help in the problem solving and it's not like that naturopath just looked at them and said, yep, yeah, high estrogen. Like they actually went and got tested and I mean just look at Sarah's Day's skin now. Her skin is absolute goals. So I also found that research says low estrogen levels can actually present the symptoms of high testosterone levels, even when your testosterone levels are actually normal because they're not getting balanced out with that estrogen. So that could explain the reason that I was experiencing those symptoms of high testosterone when really my estrogen could just be really low. But without a test, it's impossible to know what's really going on. Um, like, do I have high testosterone? Do I have low testosterone? Do I have normal? Do I have high estrogen? What about progesterone? What's progesterone doing? Is he just like chilling over here? I have no idea. So that's what I have decided to do. I've decided to go and get a hormone test because acne still very much affects my confidence and I have very big bold dreams on my vision board of things that I want to get done in 2020 that require my confidence to be at its peak and also because I want to be a role model for you guys because I know that you guys watch my story and it inspires you to take action towards fixing your skin um, or sometimes you just replicate what I'm doing and I want to inspire you guys to also go and see a professional um, and go and get the hormone tests. So I know it's not cheap but I have put aside my financial excuses because I've been doing this for a year now. I've been trying to guess what my symptoms mean but like a doctor, you don't just go into a doctor's surgery and then they just diagnose you with like the worst possible thing without going to get a blood test or other testing done. Like testing is needed for so many diseases or conditions or just whatever. So it, I just, I've learned for sure that it's so hard to know what's going on without just getting that test. So 
yeah, I've put aside my financial excuses, I've booked in for a naturopath, I've put money aside for that hormone test, I am financially prepared to be told to buy naturopathic herbs, um, and who knows, I might be put back on Vitex, I might be put back on DIM, but it's going to be after I get a hormone test and after I know what the hell I actually need. Maybe I need one of them and not the other. Um, so yeah, I am very excited to actually be working with a naturopath and figure it out once and for all and hopefully just like all those other girls on YouTube in their acne stories who actually went and saw a naturopath and got it sorted out from the start I assume it seems like but I just I'm over it I can't believe I've waited a year to do this and I'm still not where I want to be so now I'm just like no, nah, screw it. I'm just going to get it sorted once and for all. I'm going to get my hormone test and my skin is going to be thanking me for it and it's going to be glowing. And if you still do have financial restraints and you can't go see a naturopath and you can't, first of all, if you can't see a naturopath because of location, as long as you have the internet, that's not an excuse because I'm going to be doing my consultation online. Um, but anyway, what I was saying is financially, if you can't go see a naturopath or can't go get a hormone test yet, um, just be very, very careful because high levels of a uh, hormone can actually present the same as low levels of a hormone. So if you think that you have high levels of that hormone and then you're taking steps to lower it, if it's accidentally low, you could actually be making those symptoms 10 times worse and actually throwing yourself more into that um, lower end, making it even harder to bounce back to normal. So if there's anything that I've learned from this experience is that if you are going to do the guess and check experiment method, you just have to be really, really careful because you can do all the research you like on what high means and what low means, but without getting that test, you know, like Google's not going to tell you what your hormones are doing. Um, so if you are still doing that method, um, then that's fine. I support you. I've, I've been there. Um, but just please be very, very careful. In fact, when looking over my research notes before this video that I wrote months ago when I was evaluating the two supplements, I noticed that you're actually supposed to stop taking Vitex during your period. Um, but that information just kind of got lost in my research notes and my last period was the 20th to the 25th of December and it was the 27th of December that I broke down and was like I'm doing it all wrong like what are these supplements doing they're making it worse um, so who knows maybe my naturopath will, will put me back on Vitex and maybe I just messed it up by taking it during my period but moral of the story is that it will all be figured out soon. Anyway, as always, I promise to keep you updated on my journey so that you know you're not alone. But if you enjoyed this video, then please make sure to like it below and subscribe. And also throw me a comment with your questions or even just showing your support because I read every single one of them. And yeah, I really love hearing from you guys. Also, if you haven't already, then go and jump over onto my Instagram where I share all these different health tricks and tips throughout the week. But that is all for today. Thank you so much for for watching and I will see you in my next video next week.